It's time now for culture, and let's cross to our Jeannie Gajila, who joins us with all the latest from the Cannes Film Festival. Now, Jeannie, uh, in competition today is a film from Belgian brothers uh, Luc and Jean-Pierre Dardin. Now, they are no strangers to the festival. They've, of course, won the Palme d'Or twice. That's right, Molly, and hi to you all. The Belgian brothers Jean-Pierre and Luc Dardin are back in Cannes. They have seen every single one of their movies in the official competition here in Cannes since Rosetta won the Palme d'Or in 1999. They won a second time for The Child in 2005. If they win this year with their new film, The Unknown Girl, it would be an unprecedented record third win for any directors here in Cannes. Now, this new movie, The Unknown Girl, stars Adèle Haenel. Now, she has won French Oscars. Those are the César two years in a row here in France. In this movie, she plays a doctor who feels guilty after a young woman she refused to see winds up dead. Take a look. Je l'ai entendu. Julien, le stagiaire, voulait ouvrir, mais j'ai pas voulu. C'était plus d'une heure après la première consultation. Vous ne pouvez pas savoir. Ne pas ouvrir une heure après la fermeture, c'est normal. Vous avez vu son visage sur l'écran de votre parlophone Non. Um. On était dans l'annexe du cabinet. On voit sortir un garçon avec son vélo, c'est votre stagiaire Oui. On va vous montrer les images. Si vous la connaissez, ça peut nous aider beaucoup parce qu'on n'a rien trouvé sur elle. Ni papier, ni GSM. Venez, on va voir les images sur l'ordinateur de mon collègue. Now, the cast and crew gave a press conference here in Cannes earlier today, and the director said it was really this woman's struggle with her guilt and her quest to make things right that interested them in this script. Let's listen to what Luc Dardenne had to say earlier today. What's interesting to us is how, little by little, this young woman becomes obsessed by the photo of this unknown girl, how she feels responsible, not just guilty because she didn't open the door. She takes action, she does something, she shows the photo, and she manages to change people. And that's the big message in this film, that Dr. Jenny makes people change. So then the unknown girl in competition then for the coveted palm d'Or genie. But of course, uh, there's so much that goes on in Cannes in addition to the competition. And today, I understand the festival is celebrating animation. That's right. It's called Animation Day. And you might remember, Molly, last week I told you about DreamWorks Animation's new movie called Trolls. Justin Timberlake and Anna Kendrick were here in Cannes to show off that film. And it's true, animated characters of all kinds have invaded the infamous Quasette this year at the festival in Cannes. There are stop-motion films, 3D films, more classic cartoons that are just about everywhere. And now these films don't always deal with the happiest, lightest themes for children. There's one stop-motion film that's called my Life as a Zucchini, which tells the story of a troubled nine-year-old who's in a sort of group home following the death of his alcoholic mother. Animation is really becoming the new way of telling stories, and Ken, of course, is trying to get right on that bandwagon. But there's a lot of lighter fare as well, of course, here in Cannes. I mentioned that movie Trolls. Another one, a big blockbuster coming out called Angry Birds. Well, that's screened here in Cannes as well. And our Catherine Nicholson got a chance to meet some of the international voice talents who are trying to make sure that that movie becomes a hit. Catapulting into the Cannes Film Festival 2016, a movie that's not actually in any of the official selections. It's simply here to make some noise. It is the Angry Birds movie, a film based on a smartphone game that's now on the big screen. We've been to meet some of the voice casts from the various international versions of this movie, starting off with Josh Gad, a man who in a former life was Olaf the Snowman from Frozen. We're going to be working on managing our anger through movement. Eagle, heron, peacock, warrior, mountain, tree, rabbit, fish, locust, king pigeon, and of course, downward duck. It is crazy, you know, especially when we're doing that crazy action sequence at the end. You're having to capture the essence of being launched, you know, uh, and flung into buildings. And you're limited to your voice, so of course you're coming to life. And the animators, you can see, find incredible ways of threading that through the characters. Greetings! I am a pig. What's a pig? 
In the movie, the birds get invaded by pigs who want to steal their precious eggs. Josh admits it's a world away from the serious cinema Cannes is usually known for. We're going to come in again. You know, it's actually what I love about Cannes is it embraces Woody Allen films simultaneously as it embraces Angry Birds or a DreamWorks animated movie or, you know, a Steven Spielberg fantasy film. It doesn't frown upon the commercial film while it embraces the artistic one. For the film's can party, voice talent from the other international versions joined Josh and the birds on the red carpet. Among them, French star Omar Sy, who told us he was happy to play it angry this time around. Usually I have like a um, character with, with a smile, uh, really happy characters, and for the first time I could be like angry and I could have like a um, really bad, bad attitude, so it's, it's really cool. What would really put a smile on the producer's faces would be transferring the original mm. game success to the film. If not, who knows what might happen. All right, now, Jeannie, I understand that Cannes is also a great place to discover some good low-budget independent movies uh, like one you liked. It's called Hell or High Water. Tell us more. Hell or High Water is being presented here, Molly, in a sidebar category that's called Un Certain Regard. Now, this film is directed by a Brit, David McKenzie, whose last film was the much-admired prison drama Starred Up. Now, this new movie, Hell or High Water, is a Western set in West Texas. It's about two bank-robbing brothers who have a bit of a Robin Hood tendency. They're stealing for the good cause. They're being pursued by a veteran Texas Ranger who's being played by Jeff Bridges. The two brothers you can see there are being played by Chris Pine and Ben Foster. Now, both of them are more used to big budget blockbusters. Chris Pine, of course, is Captain Kirk in the new rebooted franchise of Star Trek. And Ben Foster has been seen in the X-Men movies as well as in the upcoming Warcraft based on the video game of the same name. Well, both of them left those big budget movies behind to do this smaller budget movie, Hell or High Water, just after they made the movie The Finest Hours in the same year. Now, as I mentioned, the film also stars Oscar winner Jeff Bridges, the big Lebowski himself and I asked Chris Pine a bit more about what it was like to work with him let's listen I met uh, I got a chance to meet Jeff right before we started shooting we shot ours stuff Ben and I shot for a month and then Gil and Jeff came in and shot for a month so um, I met him and then didn't see him for a while and then the last scene my last scene in the film that I shoot is with him uh, and my last day on set was with him and he's everything you want him to be he's super prepared knew all of his lines the first day of our rehearsal uh, off book completely um, and he's just the dude You can catch uh, that full interview of Chris Pine and Ben Foster tonight in the next Can Rendezvous at 9.15 p.m. where we'll also be featuring a certain acting legend known as Robert De Niro all right, excellent, Jeannie. Always a pleasure. Jeannie Godjula reporting there from the Cannes Film Festival.